Icon. Eye color. Dreamy. Foot size. Foot size doesn't matter. Really, beloved. <sighs> My eyes can see straight through your armor. I have this this tiny uh a little little. We're like your biggest fans. Good job. Oh, I love making me. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Let's Get Into a Podcast. Today we've got part two of our Disney coverage. In part one, we talk about Walt Disney as a person, who he was and how he grew up, and what led to him creating this darkness around Disney and these really terrible employees who have been convicted of horrible crimes. In part two, we're going to be talking about some of the subliminal messaging in his movies and cartoons. Things that are absolutely not made for children and... Warning, this video will probably ruin your childhood. Disney movies contain a ton of hidden sexual references. We're talking genital on VHS covers, priests with visible erections, shots of naked women, and even the word sex just breezing through the Lion King. It's not clear who was exactly in charge of this back in the 90s creating these films, but they just went full blast putting every reference they could in these movies. Let's talk about something a little bit more recent, like the production Frozen. Like when Anna is quoted saying that foot size doesn't matter, which is a little like nudge to saying that, you know, foot size equates to general size, which I would say no. From what I've seen, sometimes there's people taller than me, and I'm like, wait, what's going on? What's his favorite food? Sandwiches. Best friend's name? Probably John. Eye color. Dreamy. Foot size? Foot size doesn't matter. Now, I cannot unsee this Lion King cover, because in this cover, there's actually like a half f***ing lady on the front. You might not be able to see it because it took me a second, but after I saw it, I was like, wait, hold up. Because essentially, what I'm seeing is that the nose of the lion in the sky is like the bikini little like bikini moment there's the derriere and like the arms are like up like this <sighs> maybe it's just a lion but it seems a little bit too consistent with a lot of other things we've seen we also see stupid and weird characters like in the toy story in sid's house there is a hooker toy a fish hook that has some seductive lady legs and the movie cars there's a reference to a lemon party and according to dictionary.com a lemon party refers to an early 2000s shock website featuring an image of three elderly men getting it on and a lot of disney fans think that this scene in cars is a direct reference it also featured a bunch of older cars because in this movie cars are like people so these old cars parting with lemons so it really is a clear reference and ratatouille we saw some painting which isn't very child friendly it just doesn't really add to the story or make sense in the movie aladdin and the king of thieves there was a joke about a honeymoon and again it just doesn't really make sense with the child content we see this time and time again where the people who create content for children are challenging the boundaries <laughs> Earth wasn't supposed to move until the honeymoon. <laughs> so really, they're trying to suggest that the couple were getting it on, which I feel like is kind of like an adult reference. Like, if you know, you know. There's a ton of nudity. I mean, in the movie Fantasia, we see some casual, straight up, like, boop on the screen. Going back to Cars, there is a moment where Lightning McQueen, the main character, was flashed by some groupies, and um, again, kind of like an adult moment. It is a car, so I don't know what they would be flashing, but you get the point. <laughs> Now, The Little Mermaid is by far my most favorite Disney production of all time. I think it's the best one. It's just, that's my favorite. But if you look at the old VHS tape, this is clearly not the artwork they would use anymore because there's a wiener right in the middle, right in the middle of this castle, a big golden wiener. There's a rumor that a disgruntled employee actually did this and got away with it. But I mean, you'd think that a lot of this would go through cross-checking, and how do you not notice that? There's also another moment in Little Mermaid where the, like, priest, the, you know, bishop, he goes on to marry the prince, and uh, he ends up putting his 
on a stool and you can see it clearly like flopped up on there and it's just kind of a weird thing to draw out. Really, beloved. Like, really, guys, who made the bishop guy the priest? I don't know exactly what his title would be. I'm not that skilled at, like, certain religions. But um, who made him back in? Like, seriously, fess up. Going back to Aladdin, there was a moment where he came upon a brothel. If you guys don't know what a brothel is, it's pretty much like a house where sex workers will go and you can get their services. And it doesn't really make sense to include in a child's film, but it's something he stumbled across. And again, it's like a, if you know, you know moment. Gotta eat to live, gotta still to eat. Tell you all about it when I got the time. Yeah, so clearly you can see, like, they're trying to depict something in that apartment. Prince Ali has a man's tail, a just a veil and prepare. There's a one point where Aladdin told teenagers to take their clothes off. There's a scene where he says, good teenagers, take off your clothes. This is a hotly debated moment because some people don't believe that he said this. They believe he said, good kitty, take off and go. But others suggest that he has other things on his mind. So how's our little bow doing? Come on, good teenagers, take off. Now, I feel like he could be saying good kitty, but looking at her reaction there it kind of shows you what they want you to believe is happening. She's walking in on something that is inappropriate. Now, I'm excited to talk about this one because this is just so bizarre. Like in The Lion King, we see the word sex just spelt out, just like in front of a bunch of these kids. Disney tried to claim the dust actually spelt out SFX which is a nod to a visual animation studio, which, um, uh, okay, Disney. I mean, that just shows you that they are intentionally trying to spell out things in clouds, trying to put messages through. They try to do SFX, so that's what they're saying. So, um, it looks like SEX, and I think everyone can agree, but it is interesting to hear them admit that, yes, they were trying to put some type of messaging secretly in a movie. <sighs> Now this is ridiculous. I mean, there's a movie called The Rescuers and you can see there are some mice here animated and a cart riding through and it looks like a photo of a woman who is topless is like in the window in a building that they're driving by. Like who is adding this like, you know, inappropriate stuff to this movie? Like Disney definitely doesn't have an explanation for that one. And same goes for Jessica Rabbit's wardrobe malfunction. If you pause just at the right moment in this scene in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, you'll notice that Jessica Rabbit's dress flips up and exposes her lady parts. Or at least a flash colored area that's extremely hard to identify but most definitely looks like a cartoon genital by the way, Disney tried to play off all the drama surrounding this moment, but it didn't exactly deny that someone in the animation studio did this on purpose. And you guys know animations are very difficult. It's like cut by cut by cut. So if they want to do one little cut of something weird, I would just... Uh... Not only is it gross, but also like, how do you have the time to do that extra work? Like, don't you just want to get the project done? You have to spend like time putting these little Easter eggs in, or is this what Mr. Walt Disney would want? Now, there are several problems with the Jessica Rabbit character and Disney's production. Like, let's talk about Baby Herman being a huge perv. In an early version of Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Baby Herman is seen walking under a woman's skirt and briefly points his finger towards her underwear. This moment was edited out of the DVD release, but it's still out there. There's also this dude in Hercules who has a wiener-shaped head. Like, ew. Also, do we not like the word wiener? I think wiener is approved by YouTube, so I'm not going to use like any like C or D word. Or I don't even know if I can say 
like I think I can say wiener and this guy has a clearly a blue <laughs> blue wiener head it also seems like he has matching eyebrows to go with it why I mean looking at this thing in action you can tell there's something very wrong with this character and whoever drew him so I think everyone has a big question why Disney? Why did this happen? I think it goes back to the top. Some people believe that Mr. Walt Disney was into minors. This person wrote, he wrote stories about women and children being harmed by grown men. He's the biggest P word Hollywood has ever known. Here's kind of an urban legend which leads to Walt Disney's death. He died in 1966. Many people have come forward hinting that he was this type of person. Among those was President Reagan's first wife, Jane, and Disney's biggest star, Bobby Driscoll. But never Never during his lifetime was Walt Disney ever openly accused of horrendous acts. Was this because he was an innocent man whose enemies and those jealous of his success saw his death as the perfect opportunity to slander him? Or did people stay silent because they were too scared? Which, if you guys watched part one, I would be very scared of Walt Disney, so I don't know if I would cross him. Perhaps the truth lies in the last words of Walt Disney. As he laid in his deathbed, dying from lung cancer, unable to speak, he used a pen and paper to communicate. His last words, the words he ever wrote, was Kurt Russell, who was a 15-year-old child actor who signed a contract with Disney. In 2007, in an interview, he admitted that he had seen his name written by Mr. Disney's dying hand, but he didn't know what to make of it. No doubt those who hear of this legend will make of it what they will. Walt Disney's final words, written rather than spoken, were Kurt Russell. Walt wrote the actor's name down on a piece of paper, before passing away of lung cancer in 1966. At the time, Kurt Russell was a child actor who had just signed a 10-year contract with Disney. No one, including the actor himself, have any idea why. Now, I told you guys in the first part of our Disney coverage that we would be talking about the theories of people trafficked, killed, and buried on the Disney Golden Oaks branch. Now, this is a conspiracy, but it's well reported on. Actually, Walt Disney allegedly hid two bodies, and a celebrity insider claims that they know about this. An infamous celebrity gossip blogger identified Walt Disney as being the subject of a disturbing blind item he posted in June. We talk about N.T. Lawyer and his site crazy days and nights a lot on this channel because he is an influential celebrity gossip blogger and he's actually been able to reveal a lot through his blind item so when he releases something people listen the lengthy and unsettling allegations were posted in october 2023 but it wasn't until the blog revealed on january 1st that it was walt disney they refer to disney as a dead a-lister known for being sweet and kind and family friendly but nt claims the man behind mickey mouse has a dark side Although Mr. Disney claimed that he rarely drank, the blind item accuses the animator of getting violently drunk at frequent extravagant parties. Here's a little bit of that blind item. It is called the burial ground. You would think after so many years that someone would have just dug up the bones and disposed of them far, far away from the ground itself so no one could tie the unalivings to the unalive A-plus lister, Walt Disney. You would have to go back a long way for the beginning of this one. The office parties at the company were legendary. When the head guy is an alcoholic womanizer who hates his wife, Lillian Disney, parties at the office are going to be big. They always involve secretaries who worked at the company and were hired for their willingness to sleep with male employees. They were encouraged encouraged to bring female friends to the parties and were paid bonuses or given vacation time if the friends they brought ended up sleeping with one of the male co-workers. The head guy is known for being sweet and kind and family friendly. Instead, when he was drinking, he was a monster, and especially so to any woman who would displeased him while drunk. If you look back at old film of him, you can see him smexually harassing women all the time and groping them. And that was the stuff that was sent out publicly, so you can imagine what he was like in private and drunk. What's most disturbing about this blind item, I mean, a lot of that we kind of knew from part one. He hates women, he hates people, he is a nasty drunk. But we hear a different, much more violent side of Mr. Walt Disney. The blind item accuses him and his cohorts of hiding the bodies of two women who died under suspicious circumstances 
and a construction site that later became the Golden Oak Ranch, a 890 movie ranch near LA. Quote, no one is alive any longer who could tell you whether the two women died of an accident or drank too much or died or if they were killed, but both women had spent time with the head guy. The two women died about six months apart from each other very quickly. No one is alive any longer who can tell you whether the two women who passed away of an accident or drank too much and passed away or if they were purposely unalived. But both women had spent time with the head guy. The two women passed away about six months apart. The first one passed away while there was a construction going on at a new project, Disneyland, which was being built by the head guy, so they buried the body there. Six months later, the construction project had stopped, but there was a big ranch, Golden Oak Ranch, on site at a project, so they dug up the first one and buried her with the second one at the ranch. Then they stayed there for decades. Like I said, everyone who knew the story was long unalive. All we know was that the one body had been buried and then exhumed, and that one body appeared to have buried, been buried only once. We wouldn't even know any of that except about five years. The ranch gave way to brand new construction, and during the excavation, the bones were found. The workers were paid to keep quiet, and the new head of the company decided to use his power and influence to have them disposed of with no questions asked. Well, if these bones were discovered, they need to be brought to justice. But of course, Disney does not want that bad press on top of everything else going on. And also, it's interesting to think that the workers were paid to keep quiet. So there could be people out there that know much more about this. I'm sure not much more like, you know, they probably found the bones and then were told to be quiet and paid a little bit extra to do so. Um, no questions asked. All we know is that one body had been buried and then exhumed in that one body appeared to have been buried only one and we wouldn't know that if the ranch didn't go under some new construction so i don't know if, like how they would know if they were you know buried like several times or not maybe there's someone who has this story who came to him to express it but it is a form of trafficking i guess like if you are inviting these people to your home and then paying them extra to sleep with other people and then something goes wrong and like you know essentially they are were killed and who knows what their family thought or the you know if there's anyone looking for them this feels like it needs to be like an episode of something like dug a lot deeper to figure out but i'm sure disney would do everything in their power to show Shut it down. We've talked about Epstein before and his troubled past on my main channel, and he had his ways of getting around the system. Well, supposedly Disneyland has the same thing. This woman explains that they would call you out of a basement and then you would get a bath and you would get a dress. If your dress was yellow, you were probably going to Disneyland. She said they used color coding to make transactions safer for the traffickers and their clients. At Disneyland, there would be people doing drop-offs and pickups for kids. It's a big open area full of kids, so nobody pays attention to anyone else. They would quietly say, go over to that person, and you would slip your hand into theirs and say, I was looking for you, daddy. Then that person would move off with one two or even three of us i mean that sounds horrific that sounds like an operation and the yellow dress maybe means a little bit more than what we thought initially now just to round off on the golden oak ranch there has been a fire there that may be convenient for covering up evidence now california we have our fires but not at disney not with the money they have and not three sets of fires conveniently where these bodies would be the disney ranch had lost a few structures it consumed 300 acres so tons of fire there are over 230 firefighters there to get rid of this fire it's not clear where the fire initially started i don't think it was something with weather but disney admitted that they lost three small production set buildings that were located in the woods hmm the vast majority of our production area was untouched and the ranch remains fully open so just the areas where we have spoke about this body potentially being or bodies bodies being at but i want to hear what you guys think in the comments below i definitely think of disney differently but i've always kind of thought of them as sketchy uh, we've talked about so much nickelodeon because nickelodeon really had their boom in the 2000s but you know disney is obviously huge but in the 90s that's where a lot of this sneaky stuff was happening and i don't like it i'm not a fan of it i don't know what you guys think but i want to hear what you guys think in the comments below so i hope you guys enjoyed this episode give me your thoughts and i'll see you in a new one soon bye guys